Corruption and the sport of boxing go together like hand and glove. We're seeing more and more primarily due to social media and modern technology the ways to communicate and receive as well as put out information the manner of which elements of hidden corruption can still be exposed unlike in times of history past and there is a benefit for that because when people take to something being wrong often people can be accused of being conspiracy theorists even downright foolish and ignorant but the fact remains that corruption is still a huge part of a sport that we profess to love so let's talk about some of this corruption the revelations of it and chickens coming home to roost. What's good, everyone? Stormy B-Man. And I'm back with another edition of Loon, Coon, and Buffoonery, Part 10. An ongoing series of videos where I speak about subjects in the sport of boxing that find ethic, value, dignity, questionable. And as this particular video and its title states, chickens coming home to roost, we have no more than the subjects at hand, referees in the sport of boxing, being at the dead center of this topic. I thought about how I may present my angled view on the subject at hand and it was due to former referee Carlos Padilla Jr., now retired, and the recent interview that he had conducted being released to the public and what he had to say about a fight in particular that he refereed back in October of 2000 
a fight between then relatively unknown Manny Pacquiao and Nadal Hussein. This fight was for the WBC International Super Bantamweight title. And it was very controversial because Pacquiao in this particular fight had gone on to win this fight but controversy not acknowledged at the time but due to the revelations from Mr. Padilla recently states that he was given assistance by not only the referee and fellow countryman Carlos Padilla but also the influence of doctors ringside and Mr. Padilla working together to ensure that Manny Pacquiao would be victorious. The other two subjects that you find on the thumbnail, we'll get to them. Russell Moore and Jack Reese, who though they are still active in the sport, one to a greater capacity than the other, because if I understand correctly, Mr. Mora has recently retired from refereeing, but has taken a position with the WBO what type of position he has taken remains to be seen. But what's interesting is him remaining on the scene and why. During Mr. Padilla's interview, he spoke about Manny Pacquiao being knocked down by Nadal Hussain in the fourth round of their fight and how he had assessed that Manny was in tremendous trouble to the degree that he really could have stopped the fight at that time. But being a fellow countryman and actually being told, but he didn't say by who, that Manny was going places. So basically, Carlos is admitting that he was told and warned beforehand, not only pay attention to your countrymen, but do what you can for the kid. He's going places. It wasn't stated who was granting this interview or whom Mr. Padilla was granting the interview with. But what was interesting is that the interviewer didn't ask specific questions like, who may have told you? Now, we could presume it was the WBC, but it's not a certainty because investors can come from various places. And all the WBC has to do is preside over by sanctioning and putting capable people like Mr. Padilla Jr. in position to get the job done. So, not only was a long count issued to Manny after being dropped by Hussein, but a significant amount of time given to allow him to get his bearings back. When a fighter hits the canvas, it's a 10 count that he has to beat. But controversy has played in the sport of boxing how long that 10 count can be. Some people say it should be 10 seconds. 
Others state that the ref counts and the fighter has to respond to that. Others still state that the timekeeper outside the ring who has an official count once a body hits the canvas that the referee is supposed to be in alignment with is the official counter. But you see, with this vast mixture of confusion, therein lies the opportunity for corruption. It's not addressed enough and the riddle is never solved or circumstances that are affected impacted tremendously are never resolved as a result of this and the author of confusion is yeah so not only did Manny get the extra time to get up but Hussein was also deducted a point in the very same round for throwing an elbow. Not a warning, but a point deduction. Which nullifies the points for scoring a knockdown. Does it not? Wow. What do we have here, people? As the bout went on, Manny Pacquiao clashed heads, which caused a cut over the left eyebrow of Hussein. Padilla told officials outside of the ring that that was due to a punch. No one questioned it. It was never addressed. Why? Well, you know, early on with the knockdown, Pacquiao was behind. Even though he could have been stopped and was allowed to continue. The scorecards were still reading iffy. At the time of the stoppage, which was 148th of the 10th round, the scorecards were reading Padilla had the fight 87 to 85, Judge Dan Un Chung had it 87 83, and Gary Dean had it 87 85. But calling a lull in the action and taking Hussein over to see the doctors for the cut, the doctor decided to call the fight in round 10. What we are looking at here is a conspired effort in concert of all parties involved to ensure that Manny Pacquiao would not on this evening suffer a defeat but be able to continue his career and go onward and upward in the sport of boxing. Hussein who hailed from an area that Pacquiao knows well. And when I say that, I don't say it with cynicism, but irony, Australia. 
Now we know that Manny finished his career losing a fight to an Australian. Wow. The universe is truly 360 degrees. But Mr. Padilla and his interview gave us insight on how boxing is controlled. The interview has since been made private, but thanks to various YouTubers who have done their sleuth-like investigating and have made their own reports of this interview with sound bites, some video. It's out there for you. Mr. Padilla went on to referee two more times after the Pacquiao fight and then retired in December of 2000. The two fights were Calvin Davis against Scott Buck, a lightweight title, a lightweight fight, and then and Andre Eccles against Saul Saul Diaz, excuse me, a cruiserweight fight. But you have to understand. He made his point and did his job two months earlier in that Pacquiao-Hussein fight. And now 20 plus years later, he comes out and tells you, yes, I cheated. Way to go boxing, huh? And he laughed about it, people, in his interview. Yes. He sure did. Now, what about Jack Reese? Who's a referee from Oxnard, California, his place of residence, but originally from Brooklyn, New York. Mr. Reese has refereed over 870 plus fights and he has had his hand in corruption still impacting fights with his presence and with his mouth yeah Mr. Reese he who self projectedly says he does was for the greater interest of boxing. His most recent debacle was the Sam Sebastian Fandora fight against Carlos Uncampo in October of this very year, 2022. Yeah. Mr. Reese in this fight was warning Mr. Ocampo, who was giving a very good showing of himself in this WBC, mm, interesting, WBC interim world super welterweight fight where he decided to warn Mr. Ocampo going to his corner and telling him he needed to do something, show him something, and this and that. Since when does a referee become a coach? Mr. Reese apparently covers all bases here, though, people. And I have to tell you, it stinks when an individual such as he is allowed to impact the sport way beyond his hired responsibilities. But what about the responsibilities that we don't have any knowledge of? 
Yeah. Huh? Let's go back a few ticks. Because Mr. Reese impacted another fight tremendously. And we didn't like it, people. We didn't like it at all. Because when the truth came out and what he had to say, it showed and smacked of such corruption. Interestingly, no one even questioned it, though. No one. But I caught on to it right away. Yeah. Mr. Reese happened to impact a fight that saw history shift as a result of him imposing himself. Now, you may ask, well, which fight was that? Well, did you ever hear of a heavyweight championship bout between Tyson Fury and WBC champion Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fight that was definitely impacted by Mr. Reese. In the 12th round of that fight, which saw Fury put down by a right-left combination from Deontay Wilder. Fury was sleeping on the date of December 1st, 2018, in the 12th round. He had been down earlier in the ninth round. And in the 12th, when he went down in highlight reel like imagery, as Wilder has been known to do, Reese took it upon himself to get down into Tyson Fury's face while his eyes were affixed to the lights in the heavens. Unconscious with his eyes open, breathing heavily, Fury was awakened by Jack Reese, who screamed the count into his ears until Fury finally woke up and got up to finish the fight. Many people felt like the fight should have been waved off because he was unconscious for the first moments of the count. The count was very slow. It was very loud. And Fury benefited from this because he went the distance. They gave him a split decision draw against Deontay Wilder, the reigning WBC heavyweight champion. Once again, WBC. Wow. Is the WBC corrupt? I'll leave it up to you to answer that. But why so much controversy with these officials and the WBC and particular fighters? Fury, a known cheat in the sport, benefited. Referee Philip Edwards had the bout scored 113 to 113. Alejandro Rochin had the fight 115 to 111. And Robert Tapper had it 112 to 114. Wow. Scorecards all over the place for the reigning heavyweight champion 
with 10 title defenses. No consideration for his boxing ability, but all types of consideration for a man who's benefited from corruption in the sport himself. Tyson Fury. Yeah. And we see these things over and over again. But Reese, who, as I stated, likes to insert himself in the sport of boxing. When questioned in the aftermath of the fight, why didn't he just wave that fight off? He said, I felt that I did was what was for the greater good of boxing. Really? To wake a man up from a coma? And to allow him to finish a fight in the 12th round where he had been knocked unconscious and could possibly go on to a brain bleed later or even uh, suffer some kind of reflective action beyond the fight. And since when does Mr. Reese get to decide what's the greater good of boxing on his behalf? I question it too, people. There have been other fights within his career that he has just been too much of an influence. He thinks of himself above the sport and he's been allowed that by those WBC officials and sanctioning body. If you see him refereeing your favorite fighter sport you need to pay attention referees are supposed to be invisible unless they are assisting in stopping fouls and rough house tactics and excessive holding not Mr. Reese. He's like that backup singer who will grab the mic and jump out front and go into a solo performance. Get the hell out of here. But since we talked about infractions, the third man on this list Russell Moore, who has recently retired from refereeing, mind you, and decided to take an opportunity with the WBO and become an official with them. Mr. Moore has allowed excessive fouling in fights where he just turned the other cheek observing someone give over 20 something low blows in a fight his last match that he refereed this year September of 2022 Saul Canelo Alvarez against Gennady Golovkin for their third fight at super middleweight. We've seen this man do his thing. Prior to that, his officiating of Dimitri Bivol's defense of his WBA light heavyweight championship against Saul Canelo Alvarez in May of this year. He wasn't able to affect Dimitri Bivol who boxed his way to victory, victory on that night against Alvarez and beat the judges with their scores 
Tim Cheatham, who is always near a Russell Mora fight, by the way. Dave Moretti and Steve Weisfeld, all three judges, had the fight scored the same. 115 to 113 for Dimitri Bevel. How does that happen? Corruption, people. Because Dimitri Bivol wasn't given the early rounds against Canelo Alvarez on each of their scorecards. They had Canelo winning the fight. But they didn't expect Mr. Bivol to finish so strong. They were accustomed to fighters fading out against Canelo in the last rounds. So, they really thought that their cards wouldn't come into play. But they did. Because when you go back and you look at the official cards, you see that they scored the fight the same because Canelo's scorecards were made out before the ring walk. Yeah. Anyone who feels that Canelo won the first five rounds of that fight is on drugs. Dimitri Bivol won that fight hands down, people running away. Yeah. And so, therefore, Mr. Mora, when Bivol's hand was raised, had this look on his face to Canelo as if to say, I'm sorry, man, I did what I could. But because Dimitri Bivol boxed so well, controlled distance, put hands on Canelo, Canelo couldn't put hands on him, and he fought in a way that was clean. Mora was never able to impact the fight himself. Unlike October of 2021, in the third trilogy fight between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Yeah. Yeah. Wilder was down in rounds 3, 10, and 11. Fury was down twice in round 4. And since Fury went down in round 4, that's where the controversy really began. Because referee Mora made sure to give extra time to Fury to gather himself both knockdowns, by the way. But he sent Deontay Wilder to two different neutral corners. All the while, stopping his count at the, at, I think it was at four or five, to send Wilder to the neutral corners. Oh, go over here. No, 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 no. Don't go there. Go over there. But never resume the count from the timekeeper outside the ring. The precious few seconds that he gave Fury on the canvas by moving Wilder around, who was already going to the nearest neutral corner after the initial knockdown. It bought Fury just enough time that he needed to be able to finally rise inside the count. Both times. Andre Ward, Lennox Lewis, two undisputed champions seated ringside calling the fight. Both agreed, extended long count for Fury. Lennox, during his comments, was actually shushed by someone when he was offering what he thought of it, Andre Ward repeatedly said, 
this was an extended count. There was an extremely long count. But Mora, who along with his partner, Tim Cheatham, a judge, Dave Moretti, a judge, Steve Weisfield, a judge, who at the time of the stoppage in the 11th had the fight scored 94 to 92, 95 to 91, 95 to 92 for all for Tyson Fury at the time of the stoppages. They conspired to ensure that Fury got all of the benefit. Why am I talking about this? I'm talking about it because Carlos Padilla told us they cheat hands down and they do so the next time that you hear someone say something about the sport of boxing and corruption don't you dare make a mockery of it and laugh it off as if a person has no idea what they're talking about because there is corruption and cheating in the sport of boxing and some of your favorite fighters will be victimized as long as you don't stand up for them do you understand so, with that being said, this is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. And take your time and comb through this information on this latest edition of Loon, Coon, and Buffunery. Chickens coming home to roost. That's all I have for you at this time. Peace to everyone out there. And everyone, please remain safe.